since we had our industrial action, we have been to the mediator, and I think at that meeting, last meeting, we did make progress, and we were hoping that we would sign the CLA before the end of December 2016. Uh, the mediator never informed the union that he was a candidate to become minister. So we had a meeting, and the day after, he was supposed to have sent both parties uh, updated uh, pending points so we can ratify them or make any small alteration or amendment, and that wasn't done. So the next thing we heard via the press that he was one of those persons appointed to become minister. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, that never happened before. That never happened before. When we went to the Antilles, matter of fact, you had more than one person in that office as mediator and acting mediators. But here, on St. Martin, when we should be more advanced, uh, progressing more, now we are on our own, we have gone backwards because now the office and that is, this is to be confirmed, the office is now a secondary, in a secondary position than how it used to be before uh, St. Martin became an autonomous country within the kingdom. So today or tomorrow, there is a major industrial action I want to know what will happen. Because the, 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 the person who should intervene prior to industrial action is the mediator. The office of the mediator is so important that the mediator do not, he doesn't have to wait for business or union to report of any pending grievance or intended action. If he hears that there's a dispute within the labor market, he should be proactive, investigate, and find out if that is the case. And if that is the case, he can call parties together to avoid any social unrest and industrial action. The power is so extensive that if and I don't know if it is now, but when we were in Antilles, I know that if employer or union refuse to come to a meeting to address a pending matter which might cause social unrest, he can use his authority and ask the police or prosecutor, whoever, to summon that person to or that party to the meeting. That is how important that position is as a mediator. And it's all based on our local laws and international labor conventions. So, Little Switzerland, we, 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 the employees got a letter from the employer stating that there's no mediator anymore, so everything is on hold. Uh, we also have another company which Wifel is in dispute with. And they, not the union, the company themselves asked the mediator to intervene, which is Merchant Market Group. And to date, there has been no response from the, from the office of the mediator. So if Wifel wasn't, uh, let's say, uh, responsible in a sense that we want to make sure that the office of the mediator is given the opportunity to intervene. That's another company that we would have taken action already. Not that we will not, 
or we cannot. But based on legal procedures, we are waiting, we have been calling, we have been sending uh, messages, and to date, no response. Have you contacted the Minister of Labor? Well, we did contact the Minister of Labor, and here's where we, we, we realize the, the, the diminishing, diminishing factor of that office. Because the minister informs us that the person who we should talk to is the SG. Okay? So, we, we, that will be uh, our, next, our next step. That wasn't so in the past. The mediator report either to the minister or the governor. That was his that, 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 that was the independent, the independent uh, position of that office. No department head. As a matter of fact, uh, the SG, who is in charge of the whole department, after the minister, you know, as the one executing and reporting to the minister, the office of the mediator still has another head before the SG. Do you think that you've got what it takes to decorate? If yes, then sign up. Sign up for the Christmas Tree by Defense competition, which will be held from the 1st to the 31st of December, 2016. The best decorated Christmas tree by Defense wins the grand prize of $3,000. There's a lot more prizes to be won. The early birds who submit their entry before the 18th of December 2016 will be displayed in the Daily Herald. For more information, email us at xxmchristmastree at gmail.com or you can find us on Facebook, Christmas Tree by the Fence. Don't forget to sign up and win. Win big. Life is a journey full of connections. In safe hands, even when life starts too soon, you don't have to miss a single beat. When a bad hair day makes you sad, just sharing can bring you joy and more to come. They take the plunge, turn fear into faith, while you capture those beautiful moments. In the game of life, it's family that counts. They'll be there even when you lose. We all have our moments of reflection and hope. And when you feel you're losing everything in life, we're there because there's more to come. When life starts too soon, you don't have to miss a single beat. We're here to connect you and share life. Tell us when you want more. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. Christmas Eve, <clears throat> I received a, a message from the Prime Minister and he said it's unacceptable and this problem needs to be solved right away. I took him up on his word and I said I'm going to deal with it and I'm going to make sure that it gets done. It wasn't an easy job to do because of the timing. You had to round up 
individuals and find them wherever they are who want to work on Christmas Eve, who don't want to work at Christmas Eve. But the situation, to use the Prime Minister words, was really unacceptable. And we took the task that we went through the Sibitas, we went through South Wall, we went through Richard Estate. The guys that then work on Christmas Eve, they rest on this Christmas, and on Monday, which was yesterday, they were still in the areas cleaning up. But I want to say this to the general public. I noticed a lot of mattresses, a lot of washing machines, old stoves, fridges, those things cannot fit in a car. Which means you probably had a, a pickup or a truck. But if you have a pickup and a truck with those things in it, don't drop it on the side of the road, take it to the dump. You don't have to pay anything to enter the dump. And then it is sad that when the area is clean and then the next day we see another set of washing machines and mattresses and stuff like that. So of course this situation has to change. It cannot continue like this. And I can tell you we have been working very hard and diligently on finding a solution to deal with this problem because it seems to be getting more and more out of hand and it's a growing situation. What I'm asking the general public is Bear with us and have some consideration when you see that work is going on in the area and you see the area is clean. Don't just drop the fridge and hold air condition. I mean, if you if you if you're remodeling and you take the tiles off of your bathroom, don't 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 drop them on the side of the road, take it to the dump. You don't have to pay anything to get to the dump. And when you look into the situation, it is clear that something along with the way of the management is not working. So after yesterday, we started to issue some fines to some of the haulers, some of the contractors who are responsible for collecting garbage, because in my opinion, it's unacceptable when you have any minister or any citizen, but moreover, the Prime Minister of the country and right in front of his house, it looks like a dump. That's totally unacceptable, unacceptable and it should not happen. And I am saying that you have to take, like I mentioned, the harsh decisions. And that is what is being done. We wrote some letters yesterday, some fines will be going out and it's what it is. Because the situation is one where contracts was issued um, it was awarded to individuals to do a job. To do a job that you claim and you say that you can do for the price, for the bid, that was awarded to you. And it's not being done. And I was told on many occasions that warnings was issued. And still, it remains the same. So we are looking into this issue and we are dealing with it right away. In addition to that, <coughs> We seem to have a serious issue with car wrecks. But not only car wrecks, but there are cars on the side of the road and on the main road that is in the area. Most of the roads have turned into one-way streets because people just have cars on the road without a number plate, without a wheel, without a bumper up on blocks. On the road, it's unacceptable. So very, very soon, a sticker will be placed on those cars and cars will be remove you will be given the opportunity to remove your car, put it in the yard, get it off of the road. But these things cannot continue to happen. It cannot continue to happen. And it's in a number of areas. We have also seen where people have just simply turned the street into a garage, turned their district into a garage, whether they have a hindrance permit or any kind of permit, but that is just what they have decided to do. And that again too, we will be looking into. I had the professionals down the from department yesterday and we were going over a lot of these scenarios, looking at the possibilities, looking at the law, looking at the right way, how we are going to tackle these issues and it simply can be talked, we have to put action behind it. So you will be seeing the bulletins coming out, you'll be seeing it in the newspapers, 
you know, you see it in the government page that you know you have a certain amount of time to remove your property from the road. I drove to Cahill, I drove to Dutch Quarter, I went to St. Peter, South Road, and it's unacceptable. So we cannot continue to treat our country this way. Also, I had a previous discussion with the Minister of Finance and I told him that we need to talk and he said right after the press briefing we would have this discussion because again we cannot have our citizens living in the condition that they are living and I'm talking about down in the Simpson Bay area, the atrium, the water that settles right at, on the road and it's also a tourist area where we have a number of hotels and we also have residents living in that area and I was down there and was looking at it and to put it in these words, it's disgusting. It, 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 this is a problem that needs to be solved and it needs to be solved right away. I can tell you that plans are being drawn up right now as we speak because what happens is that you have a trench on one side of the road, but it's, 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 it's not level. So the trench is this high and the road is this high. So the water just settles on one side. So they are looking into it in possibilities of possibly raising the road or putting a trench under the road with a grill. So a different opinions they are coming up with and also the Wigwood Island Bank, the pharmacy in Simpson Bay, the alley where it has the, the cemetery right on the inside. It's, it, it's, it's like a, a, a nice beach. You know, the water, it, it's just unacceptable. So that too, we'll be looking into. I spoke to the businesses on the opposite side of the road and they are more than willing for government to take their time, use their property, run the pipes, run the trench, dig the road, and use the land that they have available because it's affecting them also. Again, it's the same situation. The road is one high, and that part of the road is low. So the water just settled right there, and it takes a long time for it to be removed. And then when cars passing it, it goes down on the other side into the property and the business of the owner. So they were very happy to hear us or, or you know, invite us to have a discussion on how we plan to tackle this situation. Oh my, oh my, what an inventory list, and so unnecessary. But wait, your home contents are all insured by Be Sure. That means that you determine the amount you want to insure. No inventory list, no asshole. Are you Be Sure? Be Sure. <laughs> Bob, I can understand why you're parking so carefully. Of course, when you can get 80% discount on your Be Sure car insurance. <laughs> but that's overdoing it, Bob. Are you be sure? Be sure. Yeah. Do you think that you've got what it takes to decorate? If yes, then sign up. Sign up for the Christmas Tree by the Fence competition, which will be held from the 1st to the 31st of December 2016. The best decorated Christmas tree by the fence wins the grand prize of $3,000. There's a lot more prizes to be won. The early birds who submit their entry before the 18th of December 2016 will be displayed in the Daily Herald. For more information, email us at xxmchristmastree at gmail.com or you can find us on Facebook Christmas tree by the fence. Don't forget to sign up and win. Win big. It's been said. 
that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. One. Two. Three. Four. This is how common it is to develop a mental illness. One out of every four. 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 But there is hope. Today, most mental illnesses can be managed and treated. Visit your general doctor if you feel concerned about your thoughts and behaviors or have some difficulty dealing with some of life's issues. If you have been diagnosed and are suffering from a mental illness, keep in mind these four points to help you manage your mental health. One, get regular checkups with your general doctor. Two, stay on your treatment plan to prevent relapses. Three, find a strong support group in your family and friends. And four, never be afraid to ask for help and look up for the warning signs of your illness. Remember, you are not alone. We are as close as one. Two. Three. Four. Learn about mental health illness by going to the Mental Health Foundation's website at www.mhf-sxm.com. sent him a message, it was on photos on Christmas Eve. It was not uh, to put necessarily fire on his feet, but it was to, to point out to him that this was really unacceptable. Not that he bore responsibility, but uh, in the sense that he should not be accepting this from the contractors. Uh, on the other hand, I fully agree with him as well, and we had this discussion. There, there is information that needs to meet the public in some shape, form, or fashion, and we hope that this medium will contribute to it. It is unacceptable, not, not, not now blaming the contractor, but because uh, you pay such keen attention to it, uh, at some point in time we thought it was a deliberate uh, boycott of the new contractors that people would go somewhere and haul all equipment out to put on the road. Uh, and if it is, then it continues. Because I can tell you, I drive the main road coming down the Elmi Scott Road every day. And they would remove four or five mattresses, and two fridge and two stoves, and a couple of uh, part of, uh, part, uh, pieces from cabinets that somebody is repairing cabinets in their kitchen. I will remove them let's say Monday morning and by Tuesday, uh, Monday evening, I'm going back home and there it is again, two new mattresses, two different mattresses, an old stove, an old fridge, an old wash machine and it goes on and on. I drove around after the minister was out there and he forgot to say that on uh, Christmas morning uh, he was out with the garbage. Uh, contractor giving directives as to where things had to be picked up. And, uh, you know, I jokingly told him that um, instead of spending Christmas with his family, it looks like he's looking for an excuse to get out of the house and pick up garbage. And he soon will be known as a garbage man. But uh, the minister at least is showing that he's taking his job seriously, that he's willing to do something about it and something was done about it over the weekend. I hope that the minister not only speaks with the minister of finance uh, about some of the issues, but that he keeps a keen eye as well on the budget that is available. So if we need to make budgetary uh, movements in order to accommodate uh, the, the cleanliness of the island, because we have never uh, in the past many years been in a situation like this. It has nothing to do with the new contractors only, because there are other contractors who are responsible for some of the districts on the island, the contractors who have been working uh, for government uh, doing garbage uh, collection for several years, and their districts also uh, are in a deplorable mess. It looks like people have lost sense of pride and cleanliness, 
uh, it doesn't matter. Another issue that, that needs uh, to be coordinated is the roadside cleaning because before the garbage contractor was responsible for the uh, straight garbage on the roads, now they have separated and you can recall the former minister that issued some uh, 10 or 11 contracts and the only one that was had to go back a bit was um, Phillipsburg District, which accounts for, for instance, in grass in front of our new home here, the new government building, uh, not being in the condition it should be in, but there is no one yet who has been awarded that contract. But they're seen not to be a uh, clear separation as to who is responsible for what. Uh, <clears throat> you will see people would cut their grass, uh, people trim trim their trees, put the uh, brush in the bushes outside, and nobody picks it up because the garbage contractor says it is not garbage, it is grass, and it is bushes. Uh, he does not necessarily know where it comes from. And the guy who's doing the roadside cleaning, uh, his feeling is, we did not cut it. Um, it is not part of the work that we have done. So it stays there. Um, I even had to call uh, Mr. Payne, uh, Jonathan Payne, uh, to direct him to some people who have been complaining. And uh, he assisted them with removing the debris from in front of their home. They admit they are the ones who put the debris on there, and he charged them a small fee, and it was removed and the place was tiny. But the minister uh, has his job cut out for him in terms of coordinating this all and bringing it back to a level where it becomes not only acceptable, but we can uh, become once again uh, the friendly, clean island that we have been. It is a challenge, and uh, I'm sure that the energy that uh, our youngest member of the team has, has displayed, uh, it will be done.